This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I honestly don't believe that intelligent people who have the, the facts, um, I honestly believe that they are lying when they say they don't think that the, the planet's warming because it's obvious. Her research on global warming and climate change earned her the Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. Terry Root is here for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview at the Trapezoid. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7, our exclusive interview with Nobel Peace Prize winner Terry Root in a moment. But first, our top seven stories at 7. When you barely win a state that helped make you president, maybe it is not a good idea to start drilling for oil off the coast. Florida waters have been removed from the White House's plans to open previously protected parts of the Atlantic Ocean and eastern Gulf of Mexico to offshore oil and gas drilling. The move was hailed by Governor Rick Scott while drawing questions about whether the flip-flop by the Trump administration was done to further Scott's political career. The Secretary of the Interior credited Scott, who was by his side, for a decision to remove Florida from the drilling proposal. I don't want your kids ever to fight on foreign shores for a resource we have here, but there's places where resources are sensitive and there's places where we're not going to go forward with resources and one of them uh, is off the coast of Florida. Democratic Senator Bill Nelson, who is expected to be challenged for his seat later this year by Scott, was quick to call Zinke's action a political stunt. We are where everyone wants to go on vacation, and our sunny skies and great beaches have given birth to one booming business. The hospitality company Airbnb says Florida rentals skyrocketed 75% in 2017, the same year Sarasota County signed a tax agreement with the company. According to tax collector's office, Airbnb has generated over $380,000 in bed tax revenue since the agreement signed last May. It is also made life easier for property owners who are no longer responsible for sending in those taxes individually. It's very streamlined, very easy. Um, it's been the, the best part of the change, I think. The revenue stream's been great. Um, it actually just it pays our mortgage. Some think Airbnb rentals will increase even more if a bill proposed by State Senator Greg Stubbe passes. Stubbe's aim is to take away local government's ability to place restrictions on short-term rentals. The three men charged in connection to the disturbing shark-dragging video that went viral were in court today. Robert Benack, Spencer Heinz, and Michael Wenzel all pleading not guilty. The video surfaced this summer showing a shark tied by a rope around its tail being dragged behind a boat. If convicted, the three men face up to five years in jail, five years probation, and a $5,000 fine. A Sarasota teenager is dead after two men wearing ski masks broke into a home and shot him dead. It happened early this morning in Northport. Police are identifying the teen as 19-year-old Trent Bartol Thomas. Detectives say he was inside the home located on Porto Chico Avenue in Northport when two men wearing black ski masks stormed in. In. They drove away in a silver minivan. Police say the suspects may have known the teenager. If you have information on the case, call the Northport Police Department. A Charlotte County Fire Department battalion chief is under arrest tonight, charged with burglary and assault. Detectives say John Miller got into an argument with another driver and it turned physical. Charlotte County Fire is aware of the arrest. Manatee Technical College now has the funds to expand its workforce training program. Governor Rick, Rick Scott awarded the first grant from the Florida Job Growth Grant Fund. The money will help the school purchase high-tech equipment needed to expand the workforce training program in advanced manufacturing and production technology. I want to congratulate everybody here in Manatee, Manatee County. I want to uh, congratulate everybody here at Manatee Technical College for what you're doing to help individuals live their dream. The dream always starts with being able to support yourself and live on your own. So congratulations to, congratulations to everybody. The goal of the program is to help prepare Florida students for the future and encourage businesses to invest in Manatee County as a result of skilled workforce. Legislation to prohibit 
credit card reporting agencies from charging fees to consumers for placing or removing a security freeze on the credit report passed its first committee today. The bill, which was approved by the House Insurance Banking and Subcommittee, will eliminate fees of up to $10 charge when a data breach victim wants to temporarily freeze a credit report. Those credit rating agencies have the ability to implement a $10, up to a $10 freeze fee to protect their credit from something that was out of their control. And that is just, in my opinion, unacceptable. If passed by the legislature, Florida would join Indiana, South Carolina, Maine, and North Carolina in banning the fee. Now let's head over to ABC 7's chief meteorologist, Bob Harrigan, with the first alert forecast. Bob. Thanks, Alan. We'd like to ban this fog around in the morning, at least beachgoers would. The afternoon turned out to be pretty nice. This is from the Casey Key webcam. Uh, we see clear skies there and clear skies at sunset out on Casey Key, looking out into the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, more fog is in the forecast as a result of the uh, clear skies for the most part and uh, light winds and high dew point temperatures. Current fog, not a problem quite yet. We're starting to see some low clouds developing along the immediate west coast of Florida, but more is on the way. Uh, you can see from this wind and fog forecast, the winds will be out of the east and we'll start to see a little bit of fog forming uh, by 11 o'clock and then become a little thicker by 3 o'clock in the morning and continue again up into around 10, 11 o'clock and then clearing out and then it will be back again tomorrow night. Uh, there is a cold front that's going to slip on through and out ahead of that front we'll get this advection fog or warm moist air going over the rather cooler water temperatures now and that creates that sea fog and it can be rather thick at times. 68 degrees right now. We do have some clouds already in that dew point temperature getting close to one another. Winds are light out of the northwest at five. And as far as the rainfall goes uh, tonight, we've had some showers along the east coast, even into Highlands County our in inland county uh, near Sebring. But that activity now starting to wind on down. We're not anticipating any rainfall here. Uh, again, things will stay rather quiet as far as the rain goes. At least tonight, uh, you can see a little bit of light rain now in the eastern portions of Hardy and DeSoto County, and that's not much at all. But a cold front is on the way, so although it's been warm, today's highs were in the mid to upper 70s. Not it's as cold. cold as it was last week. Not as cold, but it will be uh, still noticeably cooler over the weekend. All right, thanks a lot, right. Bob. And still to come, she won the new Nobel Prize for her work on climate change and, change, and she is in studio to talk to you. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. 
Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov/concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. It's not up for debate at Sarasota City Hall. The question isn't if climate change exists. An effort is underway to figure out how to mitigate the impact on the beaches, waterways, and other areas of the city. The skeptics say not all scientists agree. Tonight, Christopher Brantley introduces us to perhaps the preeminent climate scientist alive today, Nobel Peace Prize winner, Terry Root. Good evening. Dr. Root is a climate change scientist. Her focus is on how climate change is affecting bird species. She tells us we're losing species at a rapid pace and that if something isn't done soon, we could lose more. But it's her vision for the year 2100 that's really startling. Dancing on stage, it's clear this 40-year scientist and professor loves what she knows and she loves to teach others what she knows. Now you can see how we've gone up and up and up and up. Dr. Terry Root is a Nobel Peace Prize winning climate change scientist and professor. She focuses on how animals and plants are affected by Earth's changing temperatures. If we hit 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. we could lose 400,000 species. That is, if Earth's temperature changes only a few degrees above normal, life as we know it could change. Dr. Root's life changed in 2007 during an early morning phone call. Literally, at 5.30 in the morning, Wayne called me. And I said, why in the hell are you calling me at 5.30 in the morning? I was pissed. And he said, well, congratulations. I said, yeah, 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 what for? And he says, you guys just won the Peace, Peace, Nobel Peace Prize. Root is the you in you guys. And the other guy is former Vice President Al Gore. People has already been in danger by uh, the climate crisis. Dr. Root was a lead author on a report for the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. She was chosen after she reviewed an earlier version <laughs> that seemed to have a serious omission. It was a trivial review. I just went through and there was not one mention of wild animals or wild plants in the entire report. So I just went back and I just said, well, you blew it. <laughs> Her review caught the attention of former Vice President Al Gore. Gore used part of those reviews for help in making his Oscar-winning 2006 documentary An Inconvenient Truth. Gore later accepted the Nobel Peace Prize alongside Dr. Root and a team of scientists. The review and later the documentary are based on a theory that if Earth continues to warm, the polar caps could melt and water levels across the globe could rise at least nine feet by the year 2100. That puts Anna Maria Island, that puts Longboat Key, that puts downtown Sarasota, that puts most of Venice. Underwater. Uh, Inglewood, that puts all of that underwater. It's underwater. That's right. It's underwater. And, and there's not much we can do to stop it. Dr. Root believes climate change has gone from an environmental concern to a political concern, as some politicians haven't bought into the science. Climate change is something that's a politically heated topic. It's not mm -hmm. something that is without controversy. And a lot of people just don't believe that it exists. They don't believe the climate is warming. I honestly don't believe that intelligent people who have the, the facts, um, I honestly believe that they are lying when they say they don't think that the, the planet's warming because it's obvious. Obvious perhaps to someone with a PhD in biology, but to the rest of us, less obvious. For instance, President Trump has been vocally against the idea of climate change, tweeting on December 28th, in the East it could be the coldest New Year's Eve on record. Perhaps we could use a little bit of that good old global warming that our country, but not other countries, was going to pay trillions of dollars to protect against. He's referencing a 2016 global initiative called the Paris Climate Agreement. It was meant to combat climate change by lowering the use of fossil fuels. But President Trump pulled the U.S. out of the agreement last year, fearing it would have a negative impact on American businesses that use the fossil fuels. They see it as, as something that could be potentially made up. Well, they have been snookered. To know why Dr. Root is so enthusiastic, we must go back to where it all began for her. As a young scientist, she worked for NASA on the Voyager project, sending the spacecraft to explore the universe until she realized her passion was here at home. So your look went from the cosmic outward perspective down to what's actually to, happening here. And, and on a continent-wide scale, not on a postage stamp scale. <laughs> 
She believed that changes in temperatures affect animal species. But in 1987, that wasn't a popular opinion. I had a professor of mine say that he would not sign my dissertation because he didn't believe that temperature was important to species. Now, it seems obvious now, but back then, everybody said competition is what is making species ranges occur. Dr. Root has been dedicating herself to teaching those around her about the little things we can do to make a difference. When you walk out of a room, turn off the light. It sounds trivial. If everybody would do that, it would make a huge difference. Stop using incandescent light bulbs. It sounds trivial, but it's not trivial. If everybody stopped using incandescent light bulbs, it would make a huge difference. Along with changing light bulbs, she says you should lump your errands together to avoid driving your car back and forth across town limiting the amount of greenhouse gases emitted. We have got to stop putting greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, or we've got to figure out how to get them out of the atmosphere. And the only way we know how to do that right now is by chlorophyll, by plants. So will downtown Sarasota be a boater's paradise by the year 2100? Will Longboat Key and Anna Maria Island be several feet underwater? Well, only time will tell. But if we want to do something to stop it, Time is running out. Now, one of the big things that makes climate change a political topic rather than just an environmental one is because in our daily lives, most of us don't see it. And it's really hard to believe in something you don't see. Absolutely, Christopher. Thank you very much. In a momentary route in studio and at the trapezoid. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard, I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the US military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Fortunately, this was my first job out of college, so I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats. I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full-time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix, and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience, that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis, and I'm here for you. Welcome back. How often have you heard the critics say not all scientists agree climate change is real and man-made? Then our guest is already laughing. We've had some great debates between both sides here on the trapezoid, and we will continue to do so. But tonight, we have the opportunity to talk to one of the most preeminent climate scientists of our time, and she now lives right here on the Sun Coast. Dr. Terry Root was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007, along with former Vice President Al Gore. She has a PhD in biology from Princeton, and she was the lead author of two reports by the Intergovernmental Panel 
for climate change. And joining us right now is Nobel Prize winner uh, Terry Root. Uh, Dr. Root, welcome to the trapezoid, as we say. And you were laughing there for a, a little bit. <laughs> and I want to ask you about something that you told uh, Christopher in, in the story. Uh -huh. You said, I honestly don't believe that the intelligent people have the facts. I honestly believe that they are lying when they say the planet isn't warming because it is so obvious. But you know, we, we live in a time when facts, as Kellyanne Conway at the White House said, there are alternative facts. And there are a lot of people who are watching this tonight which are saying, you know, what makes your facts better than mine? Thermometers don't lie. All you have to do is look at the thermometers around the world and you can tell for sure that the, the globe is warming. Now, if you want to get into questions about whether it, it has to do with humans, are we causing the warming or not? But it, it certainly is a case that the globe is warming and there's really, really is not any debate about that. But you know, the, those same people will say, well, the globe has always had periods where it's been warmer or colder. In fact, just a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, President Trump, when we went through that cold spell in the Northeast, <laughs> uh, said in the East, it could be the coldest New Year's Eve on record. Perhaps we could use a little bit of that good old global warming that our country, but not other countries, was going to pay trillions of dollars to protect us against bundle up. <laughs> Well, we're going to have cold snaps, we're going to have warming. It, it, there's a lot of variability that goes on. And if it hadn't been warming, I wonder how cold it actually would have gotten. So, of course, we're going to have, we're going to have times when it does get cold, but those times are not as often as they used to be. We're not going to have as many of them, and they're not going to be as often. Let me ask you this, um, because I think if you look at polling of Americans, um, most Americans believe that climate change is real. We, we're going to talk about what to do about it uh, later. Mm -hmm. But the reality is um, most people, when they go out to vote, they're voting in terms of, of because they're, they're trying to make ends meet. And a lot of people think, before I could save the world, I got to save myself and my family. Sure, of course. And I think that that's a, a very important aspect of all of this. But we have to understand that there's a lot of jobs that are involved in trying to save the world from getting too warm. So trying to get us off of the fossil fuel addiction will really bring in a lot of jobs. And it's going to help the economy in a lot of ways. Are there going to be losers? Absolutely, there's going to be losers. But there are going to be winners, too. And right now, China is, poise, is posed to actually be a lot of the, doing a lot of the winning that uh, the America should because, be doing. For example, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they are leading the world right now in terms of the, the manufacturing of, of solar panels. Of solar panels, that's right. They're also doing wind turbines too. And they're going to stop having um, internal combustion engine cars. I, I don't know if you realize this, but there was a point in time in the late 1970s that Florida was the domestic capital of solar panel production. And um, a professor, Yogi Goswami from USF, said that if we can redo that in, on the I-4 corridor, we could create an industry that will create incredible amounts of jobs. We could do it. We could do it. We just have to do it. We have to have the political will to actually go for it and do it. We have to have people saying we need to go forward, not stop, stop, stop. OK, we are going to take a pause. And I'm going to say something that I say every night, but it's just a little bit more ironic tonight. We are just getting warmed up. <laughs> we'll have much more on climate change right after we check the first alert weather. There's nothing like this, this trail in Alabama. It just goes from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state. We see all kind of different terrains, great value, great fun. We've been coming for 18 years. We started off with a group of eight, grew to 12, and grew to 16. And we love it because where else can you get world-class golf courses with world-class accommodations? To be able to play these type of courses in this environment and the difficulty uh, keeps us coming back over and over and over again. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Thanks, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. It's been about a month, and 
I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC7 wherever you are. On our live stream on mysuncoast.com. On the ABC7 My Suncoast app. Powered by the Eye Associates. Providing sight for life. Featuring traffic maps and live radar. Dining with recipes and My Suncoast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com. Click on the apps tab to download the ABC7 My Suncoast app for Apple and Android. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. Our conversation on climate change continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. And a uh, foggy start this morning across the Sun Coast out on the Gulf of Mexico. And then things started to clear shortly after that, after sunrise. This is from Lido. Just around 1030 this morning, you can see that fog off in the distance there. But after it cleared out, we had partly cloudy skies. Beautiful shot. This one here from uh, near State Road 64 in Braden and Cindy Desmond getting this uh, reflectivity off the pond there. And, uh, weather headlines read like this. This mid to upper level low continues to spin away from us. It will take a lot of the rain with it too. More fog expected overnight and it could be rather thick by daybreak. We'll see the advisories more than likely issued for West Central Florida. A cold front arrives late Friday, bringing with it a chance for rain and then cooler and drier conditions move in for the weekend and then uh, look for uh, temperatures to stay on the cooler side as a result of uh, a couple of fronts working their way down through the eastern third of the nation. Now, there's that mid to upper level low continuing to spin through the uh, northern Bahamas now, bringing quite a bit of rainfall there, and that again is heading away from us. We had a few spotty showers in our interior counties earlier this evening, but uh, those have since, for the most part, moved on. Uh, in fact, uh, this particular cell did generate some lightning earlier today, uh, but that is now just some light rain moving over eastern portions of Charlotte County. Uh, currently, we have 68 degrees, some clouds around. The dew point way up there at 64. Winds out of the northwest at 5, and the pressure 30 inches even. That is uh, rising ever so slightly at this hour. The high today was above average 77 degrees. 71 is our normal, and uh, 85, the record set in 2013. So again, our average high is 71. We're going to be above that tomorrow and then again on Friday and then go below it uh, over the weekend as a result of that cold front. The monthly rainfall total now just over an inch, and so we're doing pretty well on that in terms of uh, for this month thus far, the amount. Uh, 62 degrees in Jacksonville now, 68 in Orlando, 74 in Miami, 71 in Key West, and temperatures around town again into the uh, mid to uh, Upper uh, 60s right now in the interior portions of our viewing area. Gulf water temperature at 60. So that's a good sign. Water temperature starting to warm back up after a pretty big chill throughout the uh, week last week with that water temperature dropping down into the low 50s in places. Now, as far as the future cast goes with rain, it will be around over South Florida through the late night and into the early morning hours along the East Coast. No rain really anticipated here with the exception of the fog. Now, the rain chance is less than 20% for us, but I think more important and the more important factor will be the fog uh, issue that will last right up until about 10, 11 o'clock and we'll see that burn off and another nice sunny day, but the fog will then be back again tomorrow night and Friday morning till eventually this storm system over the central U.S. clears us all out with that cold front passing through late Friday and into early Saturday. This is the same storm system which brought all that nasty weather to California. It is now moving through the central Rockies, bringing some snowfall there where they could use a little bit of snow. It's been uh, not the best of ski season so far. And you can see uh, ice and kind of rain mix through Toronto heading toward Ottawa at this point. Temperatures have really warmed up after the Arctic freeze last week. It's 55 in Kansas City, 51 in Chicago, 49 in Cleveland, but the Arctic air is set to move back in 
uh, beginning this weekend across the northern plains and throughout the Midwest. Sea fog will be a big problem for boaters tomorrow. Seas running one to two feet with a light chop out there. The high tide just had it. Uh, we'll have a low tide. Again, we're just about to have the high tide. We'll have a low tide at 351 and sunrise will be at 722. Mostly fair tonight. Fog developing and mild 63 for your low tomorrow. Fog will be around in the morning and then partly cloudy and warm. Highs will be into the upper 70s in places. The extended forecast calling for another mild day on Friday with increasing clouds in advance of that cold front. Showers late in the day on Friday and early Saturday morning. Breezy and cooler for the weekend with high temperatures staying in the 60s through Wednesday. Alan will be right back with his guest right after this. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high performance parts and advice. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. In life after the military, it's our duty as veterans to have each other's back. I'm retired Colonel Greg Gatson, and it's my mission to help you get the benefits and services you've earned. If you need to file a VA claim, remember these important steps. Submit an online claim through ebenefits.va.gov. Work with an accredited veteran service organization or VSO. And if you need to attend a VA claim exam, please go. Visit this website to learn what to expect. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. How to recover our lost resolutions. Plus, Chuckle the Clown stops by and peak performance catering in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. We are talking about climate change, and joining us is Nobel Peace Prize winner Dr. Terry Root, who uh, you, you may or may not know uh, won the Peace Prize uh, in 2007 along with somebody else we may have heard of. Al, Al Gore. <laughs> have you become friends? Al Gore and, and I are friends, yes. Uh, let me ask you this, because, um, you know, this is one of those topics that, I, that even before we went on the air tonight, I was starting to get what I like to call some nasty grams. <laughs> and one of them was a, a, a local guy who, who says, well, ask her about this. Uh, Al Gore said a lot of things in that movie, The Inconvenient Truth, uh, including that by 2017 the polar ice caps will have melted, uh, that we'll have hurricanes with 300 mile an hour winds, we'll have to develop a new category six, and obviously that has not happened, so therefore, what? But there are things that have happened. In Australia, for instance, they've had to come up with a whole new color for being hot because it's gotten so hot. In Sydney, um, two days ago, I don't remember when it was, two days ago, something like that. It was 117 degrees. That's pretty, pretty warm. But does it do the effort a disservice if you are citing predictions that in the near future do not materialize? Absolutely you do. And, and he didn't need to do that, and I'm sorry that he did do it, but he did do it, so. What do you think when uh, some folks say that really even in the science community, 
global warming, climate change, sea level rise is up for debate. You know, as I said to you before the show, we do this topic very often. And not long ago, when the city of Sarasota started doing research in terms of mitigation, we had a round table and uh, a, a, a local Republican who we respect said this. The rest of the country is discussing these things, though, and the rest of the country is going to be what drives the politics of it. So when you had the, th the, the um, climate gate email scandal um, from the university out of England, where it was revealed that there were serious ongoing attempts to cook the books to make the data show more global warming than there had been, that sort of thing, plus other scandals that have erupted around it, put into question the veracity of the data and the cli climate scientists, and there is a fear that there, a lot of climate scientists are becoming more activists than scientists, and at that point, they really can't be trusted as scientists. You know, Rod is only expressing what you he do hear a lot from that side of the aisle, or at least uh, some people in it, um, and they cling on to it. Yeah. And how do you respond to it? Well, there's a lot of cherry picking that is going on, and also the the email gate, as he was saying, turned out to not be a problem. Um, Seth Bornstein from AP Press went through and read all of the the emails and came out and said that that they're being overreactive to to the the people who are saying that it was an email gate was being overreactive to that that they actually was not a a big problem at all. So there, there's cherry picking going on. There are people who are afraid that their jobs are going to get hurt. There are people who are afraid that their, that their lifestyles are going to be changed, and they don't want that to happen. I understand that, and that's, that's true, but you have to look at what the facts are telling you. You were saying to me during the commercial break, this was not always a partisan issue. It has not been a partisan issue until we got to George W. Bush, and George W. Bush did a really good job of making it partisan. And for a long time in his presidency, he would not say that the globe was warming. And then finally, the thermometers got to the place where it said, we have to believe that the globe is warming. But, he said, we are not, going, are not actually causing it. And, and what really came about through that, I, I, I'm friends with a, an advisor of his, and he came to me and he said, what really is going on is he is afraid of saying that we are causing it because then that would mean we would have to put regulations on us to stop it. And I remember uh, Governor Chris Christie when he was running for president uh, saying yes. you could you could say that the you know the climate is getting warmer but then the question becomes what do you do of it uh, with about it and the fact is we cannot do things for the future of our country that is going to have a negative impact on business and jobs that's right and and the the point is is what business and what jobs are we going to be hurting the coal miners yes we are going to be hurting the coal miners are we going to be helping the people who are making solar panels absolutely so let's let's do some retraining of the coal miners and try and get us out to the to the to the solar panels. But that whole debate in the presidential campaign, when Hillary Clinton <laughs> said what she said about coal mi uh, miners, had a profound impact on how she did uh, in the coal coal country, coal country and may have turned the election. And again, it gets back to there are a lot of people who are who are watching this right now. They're having a hard time making ends meet, and uh, sure. and so this as an issue to vote on is not there. It's not there yet, but there are a lot of people out there that don't have to just um, worry about making ends meet every single day, and those are the people who should be taking the lead in this. If you can put on solar panels on your house, put solar panels on your house. If you can have an electric car, have an electric car. If you are worrying about making ends meet, turn then you want to turn your electricity off at night. How difficult has this been for you to be involved in this debate? I, you know, I was le reading about your late husband who was also a leading voice yes. uh, on this, and he faced uh, death threats, and, and the FBI had to investigate them. That's right. That's right. And I actually got death, death threats, too, and I, it turns out it was because of a, a, a story that ran on Rush Limbaugh. Um, there are going to be people who are going to be harmed. There are going to be people who are going to be helped. The people are going to be, who are going to be helped don't know as much yet as those that are going to be harmed. And so we're having trouble with so that. So talk to those people who are watching this tonight in, in an area where uh, the president has a great deal of support, uh, who people, uh, you know, the mantra around here is don't spend our money and don't burden us with, with regulations. 
why should they care uh, about this issue and actually do something about it now? Well, because if we don't start doing something now, we're going to go above this magic two point, uh, sorry, two degrees Celsius above natural. And as soon as we go above two degrees Celsius above natural, which is about 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit above natural, we could start melting um, methane that is in the oceans. And that's going to go up into the atmosphere, and it's going to cause the atmosphere to get even warmer quite rapidly. So the scientists have shown time and time again that we do need to stay below this two degrees, this two degree mark, and would, we need to get, would get going Would this happen on in it. our lifetime? And it could very easily happen in our lifetime. Well, maybe not my lifetime, but you're younger than I am, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. we have to take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in just a moment. Many websites selling medication may look professional and legitimate. But the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. And Dr. Terry Rue joins us for final thoughts. There was one thing that you wanted to the cover, one thing I wanted to the cover, and another issue especially around here where we really do care about wildlife and the environment, is your concern about extinctions. Extinctions, that's right. And I'm really concerned about the extinctions. I'm, ex I'm concerned on a moral issue too. Do we as one species have the right to be causing the extinction of so many species? And right now we have, we've already lost over, I don't remember what the number is, over 350 species in the last 500 years. That's not all due to climate change, but the last portion of it is due to climate change. You know, so the question becomes, and, and you know, obviously we, we pulled out of the, the Paris Climate Accords. Oh, yes. Is it too late, or have we already breached that point of no return? It's never too late, at least that's what I feel. If we had started back in 1987 when I started doing this work, we would be a lot farther along than we are now. But if we stop and don't do anything for the next 10 years, that's okay too. We still can get things done starting in 10 years, but we've got to start sometime. And there's always hope, always going to be hope. Well, only a few seconds le uh, left, but Sarasota is looking at ways to mitigate sea level rise. And I mean, is, is, is that effort worth it? It has to be worth it because we're going to have sea level rise and we've got to do something to protect our infrastructure.
All right, Dr. Terry, we thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on the Tampa Bay Rays dismantling. The Rays are pushing together a new stadium built, but a few weeks ago, they traded one of their biggest stars, Evan Longoria, in exchange. Longoria, uh, the Rays got some prospects, but will fans buy tickets to the games to watch prospects? Will these young players help rejuvenate the Rays in the powerful AL East? We went to Facebook for your thoughts. Leading off was Walter saying maybe if they put something worthwhile on the field as well as making it affordable for families to be able to attend once or twice a year, there would be more people at the games. Thomas says you need a new stadium a venue and a good location just for starters. And Pete says let MLB buy land and build their own stadiums. No more of these sports stadiums on the taxpayer's dime. Three up, three down. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, and I bet just a few of you might, just visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it for, by searching for WWSB or My Suncos. We want to thank our guest for being here tonight, Nobel Peace Prize winner Dr. Terry Root. And when we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, President Trump speaks out on a court ruling which is blocking his decision to end DACA. Stay with us. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I call Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. Want the latest weather and traffic conditions wherever you go? Introducing ABC7's revolutionary new First Alert weather app. With our state-of-the-art new weather app, you get up-to-the-minute weather alerts, interactive radar maps, current conditions, 10-day forecasts, real-time traffic maps, and weather video from ABC7, all at your fingertips. And it's free. Just search Suncoast WX in the App Store and download onto all your devices today sponsored by mr sparky your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment but right now let's get a final check on our first alert forecast from chief meteorologist bob harrigan thanks alan and the weather headlines again calling for more fog to develop it's already starting to in some places and it could be rather thick by sunrise tomorrow that will be the only real downside to our weather it's going to stay warm too it looks like we will see a cold front though move into the picture late friday bringing with it a chance for some showers and then some cooler temperatures over the weekend. It's been a kind of a warm week thus far, and a clear but cool weekend is anticipated. While the evening planner looks to be pretty good, we will see uh, some fog again developing later on. Temperatures staying very warm and mild, uh, 65 degrees, and looks like uh, that'll be at 11 o'clock tonight. We have this upper level to mid-level low, which are kind of separated from each other, but they're still moving off to the north and weakening as they push off in that direction. Uh, quite a bit of rainfall today, though, in the northern Bahamas, also along the east coast of Florida, some showers there, even a line of uh, showers and a few isolated thunderstorms moved through earlier near Lake Okeechobee and into Highlands County, but that has since moved on, and we are not anticipating any rainfall for us for the remainder of the overnight hours. Currently, we have some clouds around. It's warm at 68 degrees, and the dew point is at 64. 
Relative humidity 87%. We have a northwest wind rather light at 5 and uh, 30 inches even on the pressure. And as far as the high goes, it was above average 77. Despite the fog, foggy start, we had a nice sunny finish uh, throughout the afternoon. And uh, 71 is our average high. The record high, 85, set in 2013. Well, statewide temperatures in the 60s and 70s now, 73 being the warmer reading. And now in Miami, 62 in Jacksonville, 64 in Pensacola. And Orlando checking in at 68 degrees. And the Gulf water temperature now at 60 uh, for uh, the uh, East Gulf of Mexico at the end of the Venice Pier. Well, this is the future cast tonight, indicating some showers down to our south and along the east coast. Not much going on here. The rain chance less than 20%. And then for tomorrow, it's all fog to start the morning off, uh, covering west central Florida, and it could be uh, rather thick throughout the Gulf of Mexico. And then it burns off around 10, 11 o'clock, like we saw today. There'll still be some sea fog hanging out here in advance of a cold front. Uh, that front will uh, spread some more fog our way tomorrow night and Friday morning. Well, the uh, Midwest and the Great Lakes has been warm over the past couple of days, but guess what? Another cold front and storm system is headed uh, the way of uh, this frontal boundary into Indiana, Ohio, and there's that pink indicating some freezing rain. Winter storm warnings out, then it turns into snow across parts of Ohio and into Kentucky, uh, stretching off toward Columbus and Cincinnati. So they're going to get some snow over the weekend. And then the bitterly cold temperatures move back in across much of the eastern third of the nation beginning this weekend and continuing uh, beyond. Now, the, right now, not much going on over Texas and Louisiana. Fairly quiet there in the central Rockies and the northern Rockies. Some snowfall from that storm that caused all those mudslides into California yesterday. And uh, right now, a little bit of a freezing rain situation moving through Toronto earlier. You saw that now into Ottawa, a mixture of a snow and rain and this temperatures are moderating there into the low 30s, uh, 36 now in Toronto, 49 in Cleveland. Uh, but then there's that Arctic air and it will spill southward over the upcoming days. You'll see the long range model. Watch this area it just kind of drops down, continues to hang around the northeast. And then another little impulse moves down uh, by midweek next week. So we'll get into the cooler readings uh, beginning. Uh, looks like again uh, this weekend and then we'll continue to see another front move through and keep things cooler throughout much of the week next week. Fog developing, mild, 63, mostly fair otherwise. Tomorrow, the fog in the morning, partly cloudy and warm, 77 for your high. And the extended forecast is shaping up to be uh, pretty warm on Friday. The clouds will be increasing Friday afternoon and a Friday night. A chance for a few showers there, but notice the temperatures drop off and stay in the 60s uh, through Wednesday of next week. There'll be plenty of sunshine, though, once we get through the front. And it looks like highs on Sunday will only be in the low 60s. Low temperatures will be chilly too, so although we've gotten rid of our jackets this week, they'll be back next week as temperatures will be a little bit on the cooler side. And Martin Luther King Jr. Day looks to be pretty good, 65 with lots of sunshine. Alan will be back with prime time headlines right after this. Time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 17th annual Charlotte County Boat Show, January 11th to the 14th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5, January 11th through the 14th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Fact, the top three Marriott hotels in North and South America are on the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, according to a recent survey of 363 Marriott hotels, the Marriott at Grand National, the Marriott Shoals Hotel, and the Grand Hotel. And two of the top three Renaissance hotels are also on the trail, Ross Bridge in Birmingham and the Battle House in Mobile. Southern hospitality still rules. For reservations or information, visit rtjgolf.com slash resorts. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the nation first. 
They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at nationalguard.com. Don't miss the 20th annual Thunder by the Bay Motorcycle Festival, February 15th through the 18th. The festival where rock meets country. Admission is free and proceeds benefit Suncoast Charities for Children. For information, visit thunderbythebay.org. It's time to go boating, but first, don't miss the 17th annual Charlotte County Boat Show, January 11th to the 14th at the Charlotte County Fairgrounds. Show admission is free and on-site parking is only $5, January 11th through the 14th. Visit GoBoatingFlorida.com for more information. Checking primetime headlines today, President Trump attacking a court ruling temporarily blocking his decision to end DACA. The program giving temporary legal status to undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children. The court loss comes in the middle of an intense bipartisan talks on the matter. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest from Washington. The fight for the dreamers. We need to make sure that they're protected and included and welcomed now. Democrats standing at the Capitol with the young immigrants brought to the U.S. illegally as children, now at risk of deportation. I no longer feel like I have control of my future. I urge Congress to pass a legislation that will protect me and thousands of, uh, thousands of other individuals. President Trump's plan to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, or DACA, in March, temporarily blocked by a California federal judge. The court ruling the administration must accept renewal applications from current DREAMers. And we want to see something happen with DACA. Trump blasted the court decision. At the White House, the president adamant no DACA deal without money for his southern border wall. Would you be willing to sign an immigration deal that ultimately does not include funding for the border wall? No. For you. No. No, no, it's got to include the wall. We need the wall for security. The firm's stance happening a day after bipartisan talks played out on camera. Late Wednesday afternoon, House GOP leaders introduced a bill that includes funding for the wall, increases border security, and gives renewable legal status to the DREAMers. We're a generous nation, but we're also a fair nation, and we're also a nation of laws. That GOP House bill in the works for months is expected to have little to no support from Democrats. In the Senate, there was a bipartisan meeting today, and lawmakers on both sides say they're getting close to a deal that will boost border security and protect the DREAMers. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.